Play builds a kind of free and easy, try it out, do it yourself character that our future needs. Albert Einstein. Let's begin with a tribute to the environment because without space, there is no freedom for play. With an overwhelming and over sensory of overflowing drawers, overfilled countertops and table surfaces, there is very little room left for mental expansion, exploration, creativity, discovery. Seasons, needs, and interests come and go with growing children, and so there will always be plenty of modifications in our home, of course, given that we have allowed the leisure of space to shift and modify accordingly in our home environment. A space for play is essential, and I believe every home environment should have dedicated spaces for children, but all while maintaining a healthy uh, balance and space for the adults as well. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a look inside our play space and our toy collection in hopes that this inspires you uh, to hold a reverence for play in your home as well. This door that you see to the left is home to our art closet and I will link that video down below so you can go watch our art closet tour after this one if you haven't seen it. Before I get into our toy collection, I want to add a disclaimer. Our toy collection is for three children. This may be too many uh, toys to be called minimal, and our collection may seem like bare bones for others, but for us, it's perfect. It's just enough of what we love and what we need. And as I mentioned earlier, I do rotate and move around uh, this room as needed. Uh, based on my observations of play and interest, I do shift around furniture and toys. I found this IKEA Trofast bin a few years ago pre-loved and it's served us a lot, but its greatest potential has been as an organizer and a table for building. Um, so more than the bins for organization, the blank surface for building has the most value and the perfect height for the children. It is hard to resist the urge to fill uh, all your shelf tops with more toys, but more important than more is the space and freedom for play. Quick look into our drawers. These are bigger Legos for toddlers. This drawer is for my son, his character figures and Hot Wheels. Uh, connects set, which is currently in use, are sets of magnet tiles. Smaller Lego pieces for the oldest two, and this bin my daughters share, and it has Barbies and accessories, LOL dolls, and other little trinkets of that sort. This is the current um, layout because the kids are really enjoying pretend restaurant right now. Uh, and so we have it together with the stool to sit down if needed, our Ikea kitchen and the playhouse. And this configuration also creates a special little nook back there. The view from behind the kitchen, our bucket balance lives there. It does move around quite a bit, but right now it's there again for restaurant play. And so in uh, this kitchen, it's not really super organized, but we just have some uh, different Melissa and Doug sets, mostly pots and pans, um, a waffle maker, and we have those slicing eggs where you can slice them and also match colors. In this store, we keep some various felt and wooden play foods, uh, spoons, ladles, things like that. Uh, some Melissa and Doug, some from Target Bullseye. And then in here, we keep one of my favorite toys and even resources for unschooling math is this cash register. 
I'm sorry that my camera is so wobbly. I'm trying to do this with one hand. Uh, this is from the thrift store. I like that it's a calculator, but really it's basic. A notepad for creating menus and prices and felt money also from Target and this has served well. My kids like to sort it by um, amounts and colors. Although I do think it's time that I provide Bella uh, with a more advanced money set. Like I said, the kids have been playing pretend restaurant a lot. So we have a little table under the playhouse and I believe that every playroom should also have um, a table, a desk, an empty shelf, just multiple services for the children to gather and use for play. So for right now, this basket filled with our Grapat Mandala pieces, it's been working out here and storing them this way because the kids use them in their kitchen as pretend food. Um, and they put them in the little pots and pans and bowls and and we're also using them as math manipulatives for homeschool So I am going to make a video on loose parts uh, coming up in the next few weeks. So look out for that Our playhouse is the Delta kids homestead playhouse from Target. It's our newest addition But we love it more than I thought we would in just a few weeks, it's been multiple forts uh, for playing house, an enchanted garden, restaurant. The possibilities with its open-endedness, is that a word? <laughs> is my favorite thing about it. It creates a space of wonder and enchantment in our play space. I try as much as I can to keep it blank so that the kids have the opportunity to create with it. So I'll pull it out to the center of the room or I'll be sure to leave space around it so that the kids can drape um, our sheets and play silks over it and themselves create all sorts of enchanted spaces. Play silks. We love play silks and our collection has grown quite a bit in a year. If there are any more toys we would add to our collection, play silks would be one. I also keep a crocheted uh, tablecloth for tea time and playing tea party. And then in this basket, there's also a big, just really simple um, off-white tablecloth. It's from Target. It's so big, it drapes over the entire house perfectly. This is a sweep and mop set from Melissa and Doug and it gets used every day. The kids clean up their own Play-Doh messes and dust and such, so that's a good buy as well. And hung low on the wall for the kids to access are our Sarah's silks streamers and rainbow veils. Uh, if you have daughters that love dress up and dance parties, those are a great addition and along with DIY hand kites that I made as Valentine's Day gifts. I get a lot of questions about these pictures on our wall and these are actually the LMNOP wall cards, a companion to uh, all the letters A to Z by Howard Schrager and I purchased mine at achildstream.com. A fan favorite in our home and one of my personal favorite pieces is this a large stepped pyramid by Grimm's this block set is massive it's expensive but completely worth every dollar when you break down the cost per three children wooden block sets are not cheap and buying three sets of a less expensive brand because three sets is what it would take to equal the amount of blocks in this set it would still cost more than this just one piece um, it's well made um, heirloom quality it's non-toxic and the kids build all sorts of small world play we use it for marble runs and also for math so I have a hack that I want to share and it's sitting it on top of a wooden plant stand with wheels. Because it is so massive and heavy, it's hard for the kids to maneuver it around the playroom to build. Um, so just laying it on top of it has really uh, been helpful for us. This is an Ikea buggy and this is really fun, especially for toddlers to tow around stuffed animals and toys. It has a rope for pulling, the wheels are rubber, and the way that they stick out won't allow for the kids to bump or scrape the walls. Um, right now we're storing different pieces for train tracks and train sets and most of these are from Melissa and Doug. The toy next to it is a Melissa and Doug horse stable. 
this staple is another one of my favorites it's beautiful um, it was a gift for my kids uh, for Christmas several years ago and with it we gifted them um, a few more uh, farm sets like this uh, horse tractor I believe it is and it's from Melissa and Doug along with the stable fence and they love pairing it with their farm animals and it's just uh, such a fun toy for a farm small world play. And the next piece is also made by Melissa and Doug. I also found this pre-loved. And this is the Medieval Castle. It's another piece that my littles love so much, especially to use in small world play with their knight pet dolls and dragons and kings and queens. It has all sorts of little compartments and nooks in it that they like to hide peg dolls in and it's just lots of uh, small world and imaginative play fun. Moving on to the biggest shelf or unit in this room, and this is the cubed organizer shelf from Walmart. I believe the brand is Better Homes and Garden. The wooden piece on top of the organizer is just something I found on the side of the road and I knew it would be perfect for our peg doll world. So the top holds some of our favorite books and our alphabet peg doll and then all other sorts of peg dolls I've DIY'd. Um, fairies and superheroes, uh, knights, dragons, animals, all of them made by me for my littles. And then we have a growing collection of Holst Tiger animals. I don't buy toys often throughout the year, only birthdays and holidays, but we do add these animals to our collection every month because we are subscribed to a monthly Holst Tiger subscription box. And I'll link the details to all of that down below. Another fan favorite among my kiddos, high quality wood and handcrafted, hand painted, non-toxic. The adult animals are large. Some are larger than my hand. We use them for small world play, of course, uh, on our nature table and to make fun stacking puzzles and challenges too. And below that is where we keep more of our loose parts and this area is dedicated to loose parts because it is height level for the kids to explore. This stick in the corner is Bella's walking stick and she created that last summer. A wooden box decorated by my toddler and it just holds her random trinkets. Uh, some nature stuff so pine cones, acorn tops, and wooden tree trunk slices. Phases of the moon story stones that we use for our calendar or just any other type of um, moon discussion and activities. Wooden wheelbarrows, buttons, and these were another project. These are clay discs and we used our Safari LTD North American Woodland Animals to make imprints um, or tracks and so then we can use these to match to our Safari LTD tubes. So that was a really fun project. And this little basket is another project, it's a twig basket. It's seen better days, we need to fix it up a bit, but we use it to hold our smaller nature finds uh, from our nature walks. Magnifying glass just to explore. This stick my husband and my son Noah found and they thought it resembled a snake, so he painted it uh, to be his favorite Florida venomous snake, the coral snake. More loose parts in this tray and these two uh, loose parts just fit perfectly together. The, it's uh, like a wooden wheel and these wooden dowels. A larger wooden round where we like to burn our beeswax candles and bark trees for small world play. This basket holds a DIY color matching and find motor toy that Bella and I made for her baby sister. So the acorn babies are to be matched by color and tucked into their respective felt leaves. This is difficult to do with one hand, but my toddler uh, really enjoys this activity. Moving on to the cubbies, this is a wooden doctor's kit. I have seen it on Amazon, so I will link it, but I actually found it at a consignment store. This basket holds felt things and toys I make for the children. Uh, so our spring fairy from the fairy kit I hauled from a child's dream and a little uh, like Moses basket or bassinet that I made out of felt, dragon puppets, uh, all sorts of felt scenes, things of that sort. 
In this basket, we have one set of our way to play roadways. We own two highway sets. I only keep one out at a time. And these little wooden cars are from an Etsy shop. I'll link them down below as well. And the two cubbies underneath in this basket, we have our small plastic animal figures. So insects, dinosaurs, farm animals, woodland animals, all sorts of safari LTD figures and other off brands as well. We use these for matching activities uh, with three part cards, sensory bins, and of course play. Tree bark number blocks. They're actually table uh, setting numbers for weddings and such, but we use these a lot for loose parts for unschooling math. Wooden vehicles for peg people, and this is exclusively at Bella Luna Toys, this set. And this is the school bus, a stunning handcrafted piece, simple, which leaves freedom for imagination. The wheels do turn very smoothly, and most of our peg dolls uh, fit perfectly. The school bus is definitely the favorite, but we also have a, I guess this would be a car carrier truck where it tows uh, two smaller vehicles. And then we also have a car which fits two peg people. And these are the Grimm's bridges, which are fun to pair with cars and the way to play roadways. But we also use them for marble runs and just for all sorts of small world play. Petite collage Ferris wheel carnival toy with three wooden animal characters. Uh, my toddler does uh, love to put her tiny peg dolls in here as well. And although I would say that this toy is more for toddler age, all of my children enjoy playing with it as well. Another block set, this one is from ECR for Kids, the architectural set. These are a nice addition to our block play because of the pillars and different shaped roof uh, for buildings and houses. We also use these for marble runs. And another basket holding more animal figures, but these are our larger animal figures. Uh, in here we have a combination of Melissa and Doug farm sets, um, a lot of Safari LTD tubes, and some from Dollar Tree. Next to the cubed organizer is another shelf, and this one is thrifted. It's the perfect spot for our nature and seasonal display, along with our perpetual calendar. And right now it holds the bulk of our Grimm's pieces as well. This is the carry along dollhouse and it does come with a felt sling to take along. Uh, these are the large Grimm's marbles and we use those for marble runs. We own two sets of pebbles and we like using these in marble runs, small world play and displayed on our nature table. And then we have the nesting houses set. Fun fact, this was our first Grimm's toy ever and my kids still love this. Two more of the traditional Grimm's pieces, and that is the rainbow semicircles and the 12 piece large rainbow. And the main purpose for any of our Grimm's pieces are for building those fun marble runs. And the bottom row of this shelf holds our wooden bowls uh, for mixing, transferring, sorting, scooping, playing in the pretend kitchen. And those are all thrifted. The kids really enjoy those. This galvanized bin holds toys and things that we like to take outdoors. So a Melissa and Doug bug catcher, a bow and arrow quiver set I made for Bella, a parafoil pocket kite. Uh, this is a good one. We like to take this to the beach. Florida Venomous Snake Identification Cards. And these are the Taxa Locomo Family Toys. And these are wooden animal figures. And we bring these outdoors with us to complete the body parts out of twigs for legs and antlers or leaves for wings and ears. Binoculars, compass, whistles, uh, flashlights, uh, things of that sort. These are alphabet flashcards from Nat Geo Kids, and my son loves practicing his beginning sounds with these. He takes them along on car rides. The photographs are just uh, National Geographic classics, just really beautiful. Uh, outdoor scavenger cards to take on nature walks and such, and these are from Target. Animal memory card game, and this is something else that we can just throw in our bag and take with us to the park or on a picnic compass and whistle again and i think we have several whistles in here 
and then just all sorts of uh, tops, spinny tops and snake bracelets and again just random toys to bring outdoors. We love making our own lanterns, that's something that we do a lot, but for night walks we need a good set of LED lanterns to really light up the way and so we have two of those, our Instax camera which is fun for journaling and scrapbooking, a throw for picnics or the beach. This little Nat Geo notebook Bella has been using as her gardening notebook, a foraging resource for our area. This is an outdoor classroom type of resource. This is a year of forest school, uh, year-round ideas for outdoor play and skill building. We use this pink mesh bag for collecting seashells, but it's also holding our pamphlets for black bears because we do share a living space with them. And this pouch holds oil pastels and pencils and sharpeners to nature journal. And the last toy in this room is our mouse house. This is a house shaped bookcase I found on Facebook Marketplace. I added a little paint and wallpaper and gifted to the girls for Christmas. And now it's home to our Mylai bunnies and mice. Uh, Mylai is a Danish company uh, whose mission is to create quality heirloom simple toys. The furniture with the exception of the bathtub is all Mylai along with our family which consists of Mama and Papa Mouse and their twin boy and girl mice babies. And Mama Mouse has sisters, bunnies Ellie and Sarah, and Sarah's baby boy rabbit. My Lie continuously launches and retires collections, so I will link as many of the pieces still available. In my opinion, a dollhouse toy is a must in every toy collection because it does foster imagination and imitation, so role play. It helps develop social skills, fine motor skills, and vocabulary. Play is a crucial part of a child's early development, so it's important for us parents to hold a reverence for play in our homes. But also, please know that it's not about the most toys or the best toys. A magical childhood is actually about simplicity, slow days, freedom to discover, and play.